We start our day with, on campus anyways, with a holy hour at 6.30, and then we have morning prayer together at 7.30. And then we have breakfast on our own, and we just keep silence to line, so um, we usually do spiritual reading at that time, and then prepare for our day. So today, um, we got to go to Samaritan House, so that is our thrift store downtown and food bank, emergency food bank. So our sisters downtown run that ministry, so it's such a blessing um, to be able to work with the people the downtown area. The, today I had a meeting with, uh, it's called the Spiritual Life Leadership Team. So it's here at the university, heads of different departments at the university, and really like the pastoral care of the students here on campus. So that's um, one ministry that one of our sisters here on campus does is, is help out with that um, meeting. And then we Myself, I, I'm mostly here in the dorm at St. Thomas More Hall, so one of the dorm chaplains. And I just get to hang out with women all the time and have <laughs> spiritual direction or just mentoring or one-on-one -on -one meetings, just whatever it is they really need. So that is the majority of my time here on campus this year. And, and we usually, so we start a day with prayer and then at noon time we have prayer. So most of the time here on campus, so we go to noon mass um, together as sisters and then um, but on different days we'll do, um, we'll have praise and worship together and a rosary. And that's more so what our mother house would do. They have like a rosary at that noon hour or stations of the cross. Um, but it's more on campus we do the noon mass. It's a little bit different. And sometimes I just enjoy just playing and having recreation with the students. So we're going to play some racquetball. So that's one of my favorite sports right now. So. Um, sometimes I'll just set up racquetball dates <laughs> with different students and we'll just be able to play, have fun with each other, so um, it's always fun. And then we go back into prayer, so today we have praise and worship and then some silence and then evening prayer and a mercy chaplet. And then Thursdays we always do recreation in the evening, so there's a couple days during the week where we have recreation just together as sisters because it's just important to have that fraternal life um, with each other to build each other up. Um, and then oftentimes night prayer would be on our own um, because of our ministry here at campus. A lot of things happen in the evening, whether we're in the dorms or um, doing some kind of women's ministry event or there's all sorts of things going on here. I went to school here at Franciscan and then I graduated in 2007. So it really started when I was here and the first time I really started thinking about it was when I was in Austria for the semester. So there's a study abroad program there and you can go for a whole semester. So I went in 2005. And I started doing adoration every night for like an hour. My friend and I kept each other accountable to that. So, I mean, you give the Lord silence and time and like he's gonna speak. So I just remember, I felt like every time I opened up the scriptures, it was something like Israel being pursued by the Lord or like Song of Songs or something in the Psalms about like God pursuing us. And I was like, what's going on? And then, um, I just remember one particular holy hour that was really blessed, and I remember, I just remember thinking, um, I just felt like I need to look into the sisters, and I was like, I feel like I'm called to be a sister, and then I kind of was like, oh my goodness, like, I don't know what to do with this. So praise God, they just started having sisters there that semester, and it was our sisters, our two our sisters, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to them, that's scary. So I was afraid that she was going to be like, here's a pamphlet, you know, like, come visit us when they come back. And But she was so good. She was just like, just let the Lord pursue your heart. Just let him do that for a while and we'll just see what happens. And I was like, I could do that. You know, I could, I could do that. And just walking with the Lord over time. It wasn't like every moment was about my religious life. I still dated. I went on dates and um, it was very up and down. But... It, like, it was a consistent thing that kind of came up over time. It just was persevering there um, in the background. So I just was kind of aware of that over time. I started visiting different orders my senior year. And um, I remember over the summer, my mom and I were looking up religious orders online, like different websites. And I joked that we were like, oh, we're kind of like doing online dating, you know, like checking out these orders. So one of them was the sisters, the my own sisters, to our sisters, and I remember as I was looking at page after page, something in me was just like excited and like this connects with who I am, even though I wouldn't say like I knew I had a specific spirituality or I, I didn't even know what a spirituality was or like charisms. So I was like, but something in this speaks to me 
and I need to go check them out. So, so anyways, I'm looking at the website and I just start like crying, and I'm like, okay. So anyways, I visit the sisters, and I went for a few different visits, and um, I think just spending time with them, I could, I just felt like I could be myself, and that was really, that's just so important. Like you have to be able to just be who you are, and I love their fraternal life and just how they have fun with each other. Um, and also this like I could see in seed form like the charisms that were part of their community like in my own life. The name of our community is the Franciscan Sisters TOR of Penance of the Sorrowful Mother. Kind of a mouthful, but we're gonna work through it. So Franciscan, so that's the first part of our identity is to be followers of St. Francis and St. Clair, um, ultimately St. Francis. So we, um, Francis was an amazing person. I really <laughs> I just love him so much. Um, but he was, yeah, he was a man in the 13th century that he really brought such a new flavor to religious life, especially bringing out poverty and being emptied of self so that we can be filled with God. He was, I mean, many people know this, that he was like all about having nothing, nothing at all. Um, and really it helps us to strive for really, I want nothing of my own possession, but to be only, like my treasure to be God, treasure to be the Father, Son, and the Spirit. So um, he really is someone that we want to follow in the footsteps of, first of all. And then, sisters, we live in community, and that's really important to us, our fraternal life, or what we call fraternal life, um, meaning like a brotherhood, but ours is a sisterhood, and we, um, I think something so important to us is just sharing our hearts with each other, sharing our lives with each other, sharing our ministries with each other, um, and making sure that we have that time with each other because you could easily go about life and not have maybe that solid foundation of like, what does your home like, home life look like? You know, kind of in a family because you are working out of that. So when our um, fraternal life is thriving, then our ministries will thrive and really be. Um, working out of a joy that's set from also not only our prayer, but also our time with our sisters. T-O-R, so that means third order regular. So the first order is the first friars that followed St. Francis, and then the second order is the poor Claire, so they're cloistered sisters following St. Claire's rule. And the third order is a mixture of um, lay people that have committed to living the third order of St. Francis and also religious. So the next part of penance actually goes with the third order regular because penance for us means ongoing conversion. It's not necessarily like the mortification of flagellation or something, but it's like that ongoing change that we strive for and growth and you know, we could be old age and like not be done yet. You know, God is always preparing us for heaven. so. Um, so third order regular of penance, so that all goes together. Okay, so and then the last one is of the Sorrowful Mother, and this is really essential to our particular charism, and we, yeah, it really came from um, the foundresses. They saw themselves as being at the foot of the cross with Our Lady, and that is really essential to who we are, and Every one of us has opportunities to see that in our own journey of life and as we take on the charisms and spirituality for ourselves. But um, to be with Our Lady at the foot of the cross is, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not always easy because of the sorrow of it and the pain of it. And um, I've just, I remember different people saying something like, sisters, you're always so joyful. Like, why is it the sorrowful mother? Like, what's going on with that? And it's like, well, it's, it's because there is such meaning and purpose with being with Jesus there and being there to console his heart and to comfort him that that's where that joy comes from, I think. You know, the just that meaning and purpose that you can find from it. So um, that and then, and also that Our Lady helps us. We have this wood relief at our mother house chapel and one hand of hers is like reaching up to Jesus um, like receiving his mercy and love and then the other one is extended out and it's almost in some ways it's like Jesus is pouring that mercy through her out to others but also sometimes I like see myself like grabbing her hand and like mama like help me out you know like bring me up to Jesus so um, I love that relief that we have in our chapel I think it really depicts who we are 
think I would say for someone who's discerning that it's a journey and kind of with my own journey, um, it's okay if it takes time. It's okay if it um, is a process. And I know a lot of the time we want to know like, Lord, what is it? You know, like I'm sick of waiting or it's hard to wait. And uh, I just remember somebody quoting to me like, you you will live out the questions and live them out into the answers. So it's kind of nice to like, okay, like try not to, try not to like have that like I, I just I'm gonna push through I'm gonna you know make this happen or it's really like a revealing of your heart and how God's created you and how he's formed you for a certain vocation so it's it's really a self self-discovery journey um, and then I would say there's different stages to it so like Maybe just entering more into prayer, being having a more concrete prayer life. What does that look like for you? You know, what are you comfortable with a timeline? You know, if you want to start with 15 minutes of prayer and move yourself up to a half hour, and praying with the scriptures because what you're really discerning is being Jesus' spouse. So, do I know Him, and what would that look like? So, um, spending time with the Gospels, I would say, it's super helpful. Um, and then I think. Maybe asking Our Lady's intercession for it, asking for her help, you know, um, whether that's praying, having some kind of devotion, or just asking in your prayer. I think that she can be someone that really walks with us. Yeah, and then besides that, if you kind of like you're moving on in your journey to talk to somebody about it, you know, if it's somebody like your, I don't know, youth minister or someone that you trust in the church, um, Maybe you're in confession and you just you've had a good connection with that priest you want to kind of step out and say something or your parents if they be open to that talking that out with you somebody that knows you that you would be afraid to talk about that a little bit I think that can be really helpful um, or even just a friend just to put it out there that you're thinking about it and then after that I would say just to visit visit a couple orders and either a discernment retreat or seeing maybe just living their life with them for a couple days because when you are um, experiencing it it's easier to discern like uh, yeah this doesn't really fit me or like there's something about this that en entices me or just like I want to know more about it so um, yeah I think those are a few things I would suggest